Want to be up to date with the news on? Finance. Fashion. Society. Science. Sports. Look no further with the award-winning news presenter Tim Tullamore of Nesting News. Good evening. This is Nesting News with Tim Tullamore of Channel One. And I go with the world news, just like ketchup goes with fries. Or vinegar with chips. For our British pals. Today will be a brief one, but we need to talk about the recent developments in the crypto space. Torn being torn. Better hack up on them more. Starting with the ancestor of all crypto, Bitcoin. After having seen positive news in the past couple of weeks, for the most part, its hype was brought down by a number of regulatory attacks on cryptocurrencies. If you have already forgotten about it, please watch our last week's episode. Now, Bitcoin is still trading around 26 to 27,000, yet, as some traders point out, there are a number of technical indicators suggesting a possible drop to 24,000 region. So, if that happens, we warned you, if not, then it was not a financial advice. That's how it works, right? Anyway, while the crypto market is struggling to get its head above the tile attacks, some positive news can be easily missed. One of such pieces is the fact that Hong Kong's securities regulator will start accepting, and thus, issuing crypto exchange licenses, starting on the July 1st. This is certainly great, and while we have mentioned the possibility of it over a month ago, now is a given fact, which smells like more adoption to me. And you know I like that lavish scent. While the licenses would allow the exchanges and other platforms to accommodate retail investors, there are still some limitations. For instance, stable coins, I cite, should not be admitted for retail trading for now, as well as strictly no room for crypto airdrops. However, at the same time a relatively close neighbor, Japan, is tightening its crypto AML policies by including the new travel rule which effectively forces the exchanges to provide extensive information for all crypto transfers of $3,000. Seemingly not a big deal, yet the current crypto proponents surely feel their freedom and privacy threatened. Japan, being one of the first countries to allow for banks to process payments in Bitcoin, has now turned its kimono inside out to upset the crypto companies. But there might be some hope. As some officials already comment that the adopted Financial Action Task Force's AML policies are a poor fit for the digital assets, so perhaps there will be some easing in the future. Speaking of doing 180s, Ledger has pulled back its latest recover service after receiving a massive backlash within the community. Just to remind, Ledger has announced a seed phrase recovery service linked to one's ID. Whether seed phrase was extracted from the device and shoved it to three independent parties. While the service is optional, it was later revealed that there might be a backdoor within the ledger devices, which allows to extract the previously promised immovable seed phrases. This, of course, set ledger's social media on fire by the comments of raging users, which is understandable. Moreover, it gave light to an additional concern. Namely, the user data being vulnerable to subpoenas. And a cherry on top is the closed source nature of the ledger software, which, therefore, cannot be examined by independent security experts. Trezor is open source, by the way. So you know, if Trezor ever wanted to sponsor us, well, in the words of Carly Ray Jepsen, call me maybe. And now to the exploit of the week. Which for some reason makes me giggle a little today. So, the infamous Tornado Cash, which is run by its DAO, or shall I say, was run by a DAO, has experienced a hostile takeover. A seemingly reasonable proposal was approved by the DAO's votes, yet it failed to examine the code, which in turn transferred the voting power to the attacker. This way, the DAO effectively lost or even gave away, 
its decision-making power. Needless to say that the self-appointed emperor can now approve pretty much anything, and has even drained the Dell's treasury by selling the extra torn governor's tokens. So, torn was torn, after a massive dump on the market. Almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. Anyway, let's move to the long-awaited beta hackathon, and it looks like we will now wait for a little longer since the submission deadline was moved by a week from 26th of May to June 2nd. This was announced in the last 24 hours, as Theta VOIP has seemed to experience irregularities in its behavior, thus potentially affecting some of the participating projects. Hopefully everything gets fixed, and the showcase projects are well polished and shiny since they received some extra time. Just like one more precious day to prepare for the exam, which is a week in our case, Amazing! That is it. Nesting news were brought to you by Channel 1 and Tintelamore. Don't forget to spend quality time with your loved ones and good night!